I don't right, know. you look comfortable holding it. Yeah, feels good. <laughs> <laughs> me and Michael Jackson. You look like a showboat. I'm a showboat too. Um, should photography be approached as an art or as a business? Well, you won't stay in photography long if you don't approach it both ways. Because it's got to be, a, you've got to have a business and it is an art as well. For me, I did not, um, money never ran me. It was the art that I was going after. Now things have changed a little bit, but um, it, it, you've got to do both or you're not going to be in business. Have you ever felt conflicted or have you ever had a moment where you felt like, where you questioned, like, am I selling out or am I sacrificing one for the other? Oh, many times. I've worked many hours for nothing, many years. In fact, I would sit out on the, the, the steps outside and I'd say, why would anybody do what I do? I did it for the love. I did not do it for the money. I mean, that's, that's why. It was a passion. I was driven. I don't recommend people be as driven as me because um, it's... They can't, your Capricorn and stuff, it's just... It's, it's a given. It's the okay. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. It's a fact. Uh, what was your first camera? My very first camera. Hold on one, please. Hold on one moment. Oh, do you still have it? Oh, yes. I want it for her. This is a brownie Starmite. This was my very first camera, and I got it when I was eight years old. Cute. Still have it. Was that a child's camera? Or? Uh, it was the camera of the times. Okay. So it would be giving, like, if it was the... Late seventies, early eighties, like giving an eight-year-old a Polaroid. Camera. Late seventies or early eighties, late a Polaroid. Um, yeah, because this was in the fifties. So yeah. I I'm going so. back to my. I know. I'm thinking. Time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's exactly what it'd be like. Okay. I know a lot of. Um, I know a lot of photographers now. People who teach photography who love to play with the state-of-the-art children's cameras. And even though they're designed for children, like that's their favorite camera. I don't know if it's the simplicity or. Have you experimented with the, with no. ch children? I know what you're talking about. No, I mean, uh, no. I, I know that there's a. I don't know if it's Holga. There is a camera that they all have, and I go, I never heard of this camera, and they are using it, and they are experimenting with. But no, I haven't tried it yet. Maybe that's something I could do. Because it's is it the digital factor? Oh, no, I've actually got a digital camera. I've had one for about a year and a half now. It's not something I want to do, but it's, um, again, I don't have a romance with the, the pixels. To me, <laughs> <laughs> digital has no soul. Romance with the pixels. <laughs> uh, the digital has no soul for me, but that doesn't mean it can't be used. And the people coming up, they're more used to that. And, of course, 40 years into film, you know, I spent my whole life learning film, seeing why it's different now. And, uh, I don't think after my generation goes, it's going to be harder for people coming up to see light, I think, because they're shooting everything and then they go in and fix it in, in a computer. That's okay. It's really not for me. Um, your, your, is your focus or is your specialty or is there a difference on um, portraits? Do you, is that like... I'm unusual. I'm unusual. My, I studied portraiture, I studied professional photography at RIT in 1969. I was one of three women that were in that class, there were 300 guys and three women. It never occurred to me that there weren't going to be more women in there. I just was new as a Capricorn. That I'm going to just go with it. it. It just never occurred to me, but um, it's hard to believe that today because I think women have really taken over as far as having sensitivity and, and having a feel for, for portraits and everything. But I started studying in about the early 90s with a man named Jay Stock, and my work took a whole different turn. But I was in portraiture only strictly when I from for 14 years starting in 1973 74 working for Giddings. Then I studied with Jay who is 86 years old. I just visited him in Ohio and I um, surprised him on his birthday. He still shoots. He taught me uh, about composition and, and seeing and, and cultures of people and his love of photography which influenced of course mine was very much parallel with his. And so now I um, I do all kinds of things. I've been, I photograph Princess Diana's funeral. I photograph the symphony when I have been to Mexico. I've been to Tibet twice. I've been to Inner Mongolia. Where have camera will travel? I, I want to go and I want to, I don't want to miss anything. I mean, I want to see everything, do everything. So no, my work has changed. And some of it looks more <clears throat> very impressionistic. It doesn't even look like photography. That's through studying with Jane.
and experimenting. I mean, I'm unusual. Most photographers do one thing and they do it well. I do a lot of different things. Like I said, I don't want to miss anything. If, that I have, if I'm on one-on-one -on -one and I've got somebody that's uh, blinking and, and nervous, and, and children get nervous just like adults do, it's about talking to them, connecting with them. Sometimes I have to take a few shots. If you take a few shots right away, people relax. And they see it's not so bad. I said, look, if we don't like these pictures, here's a trick. I say, if we don't like these pictures, we'll tear them up. I mean, it's not a problem. And it really isn't a problem. So uh, I think people then get that I know what, first of all, I work very quickly. And I think people realize that I know what I'm doing and I can put them at ease. So it, it's, it's a gift. That part is the art of connecting. And I think that's what's real important is a gift. And I think I'm very lucky to, to know how to do that. Oh man, there's been so many. In 40 years, I've shot thousands and thousands and thousands of cities. Um, Where things went. Well, I have so one. Crazy. Well, the, you know, there's many times it went crazy, you know. Okay, okay, here's one. Back in about 1985, 86, there was a, a woman that came in with her eight grandchildren. And I was relatively, um, I opened my own studio in 1990. I, I mean, I'd photographed for, for already 20 years, but still, they came in and, and all the mothers came in. With the, each mother, each one of these child mothers came in. So there were probably five people in there. And they're, they're telling everybody what to do, when to do, and how to do it. And I'm trying to take pictures, and the kids are screaming. And finally, I just said, stop. Everybody out of here except the kids and the grandmother. And, you know, I, I'm still in touch with that woman today. I just did their family of 24 two weeks ago. And, um, yeah, that's very memorable because I had to say everybody out. And, you know, I was kind of more shy than I am today. <laughs> Hard to believe, I know. <laughs> but um, it, it, was, it was a difficult city because, like I said, we weren't getting anywhere. And there's many of those times. I do not like to shoot with the parents or anyone in the room with me, except if they're assisting me. Because, I, first of all, I want their attention on me. And if a mother's in here, they'll always, if I get them to smile, they'll rivet to the mother. Okay. And I've lost them. And so I want the mothers out. And, and one time I had a mother that kept combing the kids' hair and go like this. Yeah. And finally, I, finally, she's doing this. I took a picture with her hand in the picture. Now, this is before digital, where you could take the hand out. And I said, oh, I think I can take that picture again. And she never stuck her hand in there again. So, you know, you hear this many times. And, oh, the hardest thing. Oh, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you one more. This is interesting. I was shooting for Crystal Charity Mall, and I had a group of five tiddlers, little kids, and I had a new assistant. I was working at Giddings at the time. The new assistant loaded the film, but it didn't load so that it would run through. Now, this was a hard sitting. It was four kids and two rabbits, four little kids and two rabbits. When we got done with the sitting, I saw the film. I saw that it had never advanced, which means we got nothing. I knew at that moment we had nothing. So what's my choices? The kids are finished, they're crying, they're going off, and I go, oh, I've got another idea. Let's do this, because I couldn't just let them go. I mean, I had to, I had to come up with something, and that's something you've got to be, if you're a photographer, you wear many hats. And like I said, it was a new assistant, I didn't check it, that was my fault, but I didn't, you know, I, I had to bring them back. And that's, that's hard, because logarithmically, yeah. it takes longer to take the shoot then. And I missed a lot of good shots, I got them, but I, I'm a photographer, it meant something. I used to, I used to um, when I worked at Giddings especially, I'd say, oh, I worked at Giddings. It was a very prestigious studio. And they'd say, wow, you must really be good. Now, I was young, and I knew I wasn't that good, but they thought I was, and so what the heck. But, you know, it's like getting into five, getting into 20 years, it was still good. 25 years, now 30, good. Now I'm into getting close to 40 years in photography, professionally shooting. You say you're a photographer, and people go, yeah, me too. So yeah. I started on the airplane when I was doing trips. I would bring my work with me, because I'd sit next to somebody talking to you. I'd go, yeah, I'm a photographer. This was five years ago, let's say. I don't do it anymore. I don't even bring my, my work. But I'd sit there, and I'd go, yeah, I'm a photographer. Um, they go, me too. And I said, wait a minute. And I'd pull out my work, and they go, oh, you really are a photographer. Now it's everybody's a photographer. Right. Photographing at Princess Diana's funeral, that was probably one of the last big events that there weren't that many photographers there, and I was one of them. Today, if you went to Michael Jackson's funeral, everybody, I'm sure, was capturing everything. Good news, bad news, you know, because you get to see more of the world, and we're getting the world's getting smaller and smaller. But the art of photography has changed as to what it meant. And like I say, when I was a, told people I was a photographer, I was real proud of that, and it meant something.